Hi everybody, welcome to the Creation Station. Stefano, we're off here with a quick report about what I learned about string maintenance and the tuning a guitar right and stringing it upright across several thousand shows in a 20 year plus career. So check it out. We're starting, first of all, with the proper restringing of the guitar. Okay, so a couple of do's and don'ts, so check them all out. This is the way to put the string in, into these tail pieces. Put the strings in here till it comes out, then give it a quick twist that enables it to slide out. And now we're pulling the string through. And not this way, uh-uh. Twist it sideways. That's the way it's supposed to sit. Okay, now it gets really interesting. These two videos you see side by side are synchronized in time. You can see that what I'm doing with my hand and the video on the right causes a reaction of the string whose ball end is not inserted into the tailpiece, just so you can see what happens to the string as I do this move that I never ever want you to do. So watch what happens if I do what the tech suggested. He went, oh, I'm going to go the lazy route. I'm going to rewind it a couple of times. Now let's watch this again in slow speed. You can see it. There it goes. String flips once and twice. If that string were inserted into the bridge piece, the string could not release the inner tension and you would have something called rotational or axial tension on the string. So whatever you do, do not allow that string to have a rotational tension on it because when it's pulled all the way into the tailpiece, it cannot release that tension. In other words, it's a really good idea for bad intonation or it's a bad idea for good intonation. So don't do it. Now we're going to move on to the actual process of restringing. We're going to make sure that we don't have too many windings of strings here on the peg itself. We're going to talk about the little helpers such as this little device that help us keeping the hands uncrammed and so forth. All good things to have with you when you're on the road or in the studio. And now comes the most defining aspect. How long well, how much of a, res a reservoir of string do we want to allow? And the trick is not too little and not too much. I want to say about two or three windings is enough. I'm going to slightly bend it upward and then get my favorite new tool, which is my little Ernie Ball peg winder. And then I'm going to... Here we go. This is how it should look. Make sure that the next thread, C winds under the previous one, not above. That presses the string down. This is how it should look. Okay, now we're starting to see some tension here. Okay, we can set this upright. Sorry, I'm just moving this in a better position here. That's almost too much string. You want it, this should be the maximum, too winding. There we go. Okay, good, that's already too as sharp. There we go. Now that we're done with this, I'm gonna take a little clipper here and clip this off after. I made a sh sharp uh, rectangle turn. This enables this uh, part of the string not to stick out and injure me. So I'm kind of bend it around. Now let's take a look at how this really is looking. All right, so you can clearly see that there's still enough room on the, whatever you call this thing, and that the downward pressure 
is thereby granted. If the string were above, it would not put enough pressure on the saddle and give chance to rattle. So that's, that's how this thread should look. Inserting the string. So I'm giving it about, let me see if you can see this here. So this would be tight, so I'm going to back off about, looks like almost like a half an inch of slack. And then I'm going to wind it up. And after that there's some little extra we have to do. Same thing here, the next winding as it crosses over the winding has to be under the previous one. That's, that's the case now. Okay, we're seeing some tension here. Good. Tension is there. Now, I'm going to Actually, I'm going to make it so that you can see it. I'm going to actually loop it through that hole. Go through it and pull it tight. That's easiest to do with the pliers, of set of pliers, of course. Right now I'm doing it manually. And then comes the trimming. With these strings you have to be really careful because they can land in your finger in one second. They will go right in without even, you almost don't feel it at first until a couple of seconds later. So here's that little rectangle or right angle bend after or behind which I'm going to cut. Then this gets bent uh, down and out of the way. There she is. There you go. Then pre-stretch as you did with the other one. That was the top string. Alright, just one little word about these little helpers. This is my little Ernie Ball peg winder. And I'm asking myself seriously whenever I look at this thing now, why did it take me 27 years of, you know, hand cramps and, and all sorts of discomfort and hassle to restring instruments? Why did it take me so long to buy this thing, which is like 30 bucks or something like that? It's so worth it. So now it's bi-directional. It could go this way or it could go that way. Okay. Put it on a playhead. Reached unstringing the guitar go like this. And after so few seconds, you're already prepared to just lift the string out and pull it out. Tensing the string, putting it in. Same deal. Go forward. We're done. And then we're like, why oh why did I wait this long? Anyways, moving on. So the next thing I do, I bring it into approximate tuning, close to where the E should be. That's close. And then I, I do just a little bit of flexing over here, just to make sure that the string conforms to this angle. Same thing over here. I press a little bit down here. And then do this, my special flexing on the guitar. I'll show you how that looks. Okay, the flexing on the guitar, when I have all six strings on, it always looks the same to me. I do this. This hand pushes down slightly. This hand pushes upward in this direction. 
or as I've got the guitar flat in front of me, f push away from me, and this one, the right hand pulls close to me, and, I, and then they change position. See that? That's a good pre-stretch. It's pre-stretch. We just lost a half note, half step. And note that it's absolutely important to always end your tuning process in upward tuning. Never do this because not enough slippage has occurred of the string through the saddle. That means there's still more relaxation in the string here than there is released across the string because it's held back by the friction of the saddle. That's why the last thing should always be the pull on this string and it should be the upward movement. See, that's where I just stop at the upward movement, tonally speaking. So I'm coming from flat to sharp. Now there's another very, very important thing that I'd like to point out. My next secret weapon. There's not one road trip that I do without that stuff. Absolutely essential. Do you know how sometimes strings get black and corroded? That's because you don't have that stuff on there. This is what I do. Fast fret has been around since, I don't know, 35, 40 years. And ever since I discovered it, I loved it. It's basically a liquid that's in this sponge here. This is old. This has been with me for a long time. That you basically apply to the string. And what you can hear by the squealing sound here, that there's a liquid being put on the string. It's been applied to the string, which seals off the metallic pores of those strings and the windings it goes in between and to make sure that the liquid not only sits on the top but gets spread all the way around I go like I put a little towel like this and go up and down the string and then pull back down and if there's a few fibers coming off of course remove these fibers from the string so they don't dull the sound of the string now the stuff is ready. It also makes the playing action faster because there's a little bit of easier flow as you play across the strings. That's it's going to come in very handy when you are in uh, different weather conditions on the road. When the, uh, there's a lot of humidity around you, that's going to protect the strings. Um, or if it's, very, if it's a little chillier, then the strings feel stickier. This mitigates that. It almost feels like how you feel when you've practiced for about an hour and did your runs and did your exercises and the hands uh, give off a little bit of sweat and makes it easier to glide across uh, the fret positions. So fast fret enables you to start out with that ease of, uh, of string comfort that normally comes when your hands sweat just a little bit. Also, hand sweat is ruinous to the strings. This particular liquid seals them off against that. So I cannot stress this enough. This is my go-to thing on the stage and uh, wherever I go with a guitar. Doesn't matter if it's electric or acoustic. I even put it on classical guitars. Absolutely essential. Um, all right, so now let's pretend that we've done all the tuning. We, we released all the pressure points. We made the string conform. And these points over here, and uh, then I just make sure that I check the tuning once or twice. Uh, and I, by the way, I never play a show with brand new strings. I must have had played those strings sometimes in the afternoon or in the morning before I even embark on the journey to the venue. Then the, the tuning that happens in the venue happens when the guitar is standing outside in the venue's air it gets a, and it gets acclimated to it unless it's freezing cold. Of course, then you can't do it. Then you're up for a whole nother uh, game of um, faith almost I should say. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to this channel. It helps the channel out dramatically. And I want to bring you a lot more of these videos down the line. This uh, is one of at least 10 or 15 uh, guitar related videos that I'm going to release over the next couple of months. That's it. Also do check out my website stefanoberoff.com. There's a lot more resources to draw from. This is it for now. Stefan Oberoff signing out from the Creation Station. Take good care and stay creative. But I can't say goodbye without doing this.